A second type of DC imperfection that we need to be aware of arises from bias currents associated with the transistors in the input stage of the, op of the op amp. So here we have a schematic drawing of the input stage of the of a BJT op amp, a bipolar junction transistor op amp. And while we haven't studied those, suffice it to say for right now that these two transistors, when they're connected to a power supply to bias them or to get them into a state of being ready to amplify, those two transistors require a relatively small input bias current. So even when you don't have anything else hooked up, just the power supplies are hooked up, there are bias currents flowing into these two transistors. And those two transistors represent the inputs to the operational amplifier. We model those two bias currents as independent current sources flowing into each of the two terminals, both into the inverting and the non-inverting terminal. So IB1 and IB2 are called input bias currents. The average of those two currents is a, a, a quantity that is also of interest that we'll be using later on to simplify things. And so this is just the average input bias current. A third quantity of interest is known as the input offset current. And it is simply the magnitude, so we're not worried about sign here, it's simply the magnitude of the difference between these two currents. As we saw with the offset voltage, even though it's intended that this transistor and this transistor are identical and these resistors are identical, they won't in fact be identical. And for the same reasons, IB1 and IB2 won't be exactly the same. So the difference between them is known as the input offset current. The input offset current is usually about a tenth of the base current sizes. So the difference between the two is usually about a tenth of what the actual amplitude of those of those currents are. We had to also point out at this point that um, these input offset current phenomenon is is a function or is, is uh, something that we deal with more with bipolar junction transistors or BJTs than we'll have to deal with with field effect transistors. On the field effect transistors the input currents are, are darn near zero. Um, at the uh, input gates, um, I'm not saying it very well, but the input gates uh, don't. The input gates on the field effect transistors don't draw nearly the amount of current that the input bases do on the bipolar junction transistors. Again, this input offset current and the input bias currents are two quantities that you'll find in the data sheet, um, and you'll notice that typical values for the input offset current. The input offset current, again, is the magnitude of IB1 minus IB2. So the difference between them is typically on the order of about 3 nanoamps, whereas each of those, those uh, input bias currents are on the order of 40 amps each. So as you can see, that they are relatively close to each other in size, and the offset current, the difference between the two, is something on the order of about one-tenth of the actual bias current sizes themselves.